Hello! In this video, we will explore the technique of integration by parts. We'll demonstrate the basics and then perform other examples in two other videos. From your work in calculus, you know the antiderivatives for many basic functions, including those listed here. There are times, however, that you need to integrate a function which does not meet one of these basic forms. So the purpose of this video and other techniques you will learn in the days to come will be to transform an integral into one of these basic forms. You already know some techniques in order to transform a complicated integrand into something that, that meets one of those basic forms. One of the methods is just elementary algebra. For example, if we take the integral of the quantity t cubed minus 1 squared divided by the square root of t dt, we use algebra to expand that numerator divide by t to the 1 half. We now have an integral that is just a linear combination uh, involving powers of t. You also know how to apply u substitution, knowing that u substitution reverses the chain rule and also can result in an integrand taking one of the basic forms. As an example, we have the integral of the square root of the natural log of 3z all divided by 4z dz. If we let u equal the natural log of 3z, then the derivative of u with respect to z is 1 over z, and we change this integral that looks more complicated into an integral that takes one of the very basic forms, again, uh, applying the power rule. So in this video, we'll look at integration by parts, and this technique reverses the product rule. As you recall, the derivative of a product, u of x times v of x, is equal to the derivative of the first function times the second function, u prime of x times v of x, plus the first function, u of x, times the derivative of the second function, v prime of x. If I integrate both sides, I have the integral of the derivative of the product is equal to the sum of those two integrals. And if I want to solve for the integral of u of x times v prime of x dx, I get that the integral of u of x times v prime of x dx is equal to the integral of the derivative of the product u of x and v of x dx minus the integral of u prime of x times v of x dx. Now I know that the this first integral is simply going to give us back to u of x times v of x plus or minus a constant. I have the integral of u of x times v prime of x dx is equal to u of x times v of x minus the integral of u prime of x times v of x dx. We're going to make use of differentials, and as you recall, dv is equal to v prime of x dx, which we see right there on the left-hand side. du is equal to u prime of x dx, which we see on the right-hand side of the equation in that second integral. When I put those pieces together, I get the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. As we apply this technique of integration, we see that we will need to make choices for u and dv to represent that entire integrand. Once we find those choices, we would then find du and v, and then we can write the right-hand side of the equation. When we apply this technique, we need to choose which portion of the integrand to make u, and the rest of it becomes dv. Sometimes the choice can be difficult. If you get stuck, you make a different choice and try integration by parts again. I have a couple suggestions for you. One is if there is a part of the integrand that you know you can integrate, let that be the dv. Similarly, if there's a part that you cannot integrate, let that be your u. There are times that you will have to apply integration by parts multiple times. With each application, you want to ask yourself, did I improve the integral? Or in other words, does the resulting integral look better than the original integral? If so, then you're likely headed in the right direction. And if not, you may want to change your choices for u and dv. So let's consider an example. Let's evaluate the integral of theta squared times sine of theta d theta. We want to make a choice for u, and we want to make a choice for dv. We need to have everything in this integrand be represented in our u and dv. 
So suppose we let u equal theta squared. Now, this is an integral in which either piece, theta squared or sine of theta, are pieces that we could integrate. So this calls for, this is where extra practice comes into play, where you, you would identify what would be a better choice. So we'll work through both choices, but first let's consider u is equal to theta squared, and then dv becomes the rest of the integrand. So we'll work with u equals theta squared and find du. So if u is equal to theta squared, the derivative of u with respect to theta is 2 theta, so du is equal to 2 theta d theta. Since dv is equal to sine of theta d theta, we will integrate sine of theta d theta to give us v, and we'll get v is equal to the negative cosine of theta. Now notice I didn't add a plus c. You could, but when you use integration by parts, that plus c, the result of adding the plus c would end up canceling out. So we're going to wait to include a plus c until after we evaluate the second integral in the integration by parts technique. So we're going to choose the simplest antiderivative for v. So if we con continue, we have u equals theta squared, du is equal to 2 theta d theta, dv is sine of theta d theta, and v is equal to negative cosine of theta, and we simply put the parts where they need to go when I have u times v minus the integral of v du. So I have the integral of theta squared times sine of theta d theta equals theta squared times negative cosine of theta minus the integral of negative cosine of theta times 2 theta d theta. We can perform some simplification, and we look at that integral on the right-hand side and ask, did we make an improvement? And I say we did. The power of theta decreased by 1, which seems to be an improvement over theta squared. You might ask, what would happen if we had made the opposite choice? What if u was equal to the sine of theta and dv is equal to theta squared? I would like you to pause the video and determine what results. Would we, again, get an improved integral on the right side? Well, let's see what happens. Suppose we'd let u equal to sine of theta, then the derivative of u with respect to theta would be cosine of theta, so du would be cosine of theta d theta. If dv is equal to the rest of the integral, theta squared d theta, then v would be the integral of theta squared d theta, and v would be the simplest antiderivative, which would be one-third theta cubed. When I put the pieces together using integration by parts, so the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du, I would get that the integral of theta squared sine of theta d theta is equal to sine of theta times one-third theta cubed minus one-third times the integral of theta cubed times cosine of theta. So again, we asked, did we get an improved integral? And we didn't. The power of theta actually increased rather than decreased, not seemingly getting us closer to a basic form <clears throat> for the antiderivatives that we know. So therefore, we're going to keep with our original choice of u equal theta squared and dv equals sine of theta to give us the improved case. So returning to our original choice of u equal theta squared and dv equals sine of theta d theta, we arrived at the equation, the integral of theta squared sine of theta d theta is negative theta squared cosine of theta plus two times the integral of theta times cosine of theta d theta. We notice that the integral on the right side is better, but it's still not one of our basic forms that we can integrate. Therefore, we perform integration by parts again. And since before, when we had u equals theta squared, when we performed integration by parts, the power decreased by 1. It would be a good idea to, again, let theta be that u. But we're not going to use u and v this time, since we already used them. We'll use w and dz. So let's let w equal theta. Let's let dz equal the rest of the integrand, cosine of theta d theta. If I take the derivative of w with respect to theta, I get 1, so dw is equal to d theta. Now I want to integrate dz to get z, so the integral of cosine of theta d theta is sine of theta. And putting those pieces together 
making sure I keep track of the positive and negative signs as well as making use of parentheses, I will use integration by parts to let, let us use that the integral of w dz is equal to w times z minus the integral of z dw so that our original integral is equal to negative theta squared cosine of theta plus 2 times the quantity theta times the sine of theta minus the integral of sine of theta d theta. And we see that this integral matches one of our basic forms that we know. So we can finish off the integral and we get negative theta squared times cosine of theta plus 2 theta sine of theta plus 2 cosine of theta plus c. And we can check the answer by differentiating. Do we get back to the original integrand theta squared times sine of theta? I will let you check that. So let's review the important ideas surrounding integration by parts. This is a useful technique for simplifying integrals. This is something that you're expected to practice and know. This technique can be used repeatedly until you arrive at a form that meets one of the basic integrals that you know. Make sure you watch the addition and subtraction signs and make careful use of parentheses as you complete multiple applications of the technique. And when evaluating an indefinite integral using integration by parts, make sure you include the plus C when evaluating that second integral.